uh, poetry. Yes. I mean, I have to admit, I was like, poetry, this can be a little intimidating. How do you advise people who are approaching poetry for the first time to digest it? Yeah, um, I typically don't advise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You That's know? what I do with comedy, too. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like when you go up on stage to deliver a, some fascinating stand-up, I just share a poem. Right. Um, there were these seventh graders in, in Dallas, Texas, these boys, and their teacher wanted them to get excited about poetry. Yeah. And so I went in their library and just... A quick shoulder shake, a slick eye fake. Number 28 is way past late. He's reading me like a book, but I turn the page and watch him look, which can only mean I got him shook. So I went through this whole poem, and at the end... <laughs> all the boys... Do I, do I have to do one now? Is it like battle poems or something? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, okay, okay. Your turn. Yeah. But at the end, all the boys were like, oh! Right, right, right. So right, I think right. it's just, we got to hear poetry, and it's how we learned how to read yeah. and write nursery rhymes as yeah. a kid, yeah. lullabies. Yeah. We don't remember that we love poetry, and I think I'm trying to, you know, remind us of that. I love it. A lot of, you've written 40 books. A lot of what you write about involves sports. Right. Some people hear sports and they block it or they run away. But why are sports an important metaphor for you? Well, I mean, I think they remind us of things like teamwork, yeah. how important it is to collaborate. Yeah. They remind us of resilience. They remind us of grit, you know? And so I think sports is a great metaphor for our lives. If you miss enough of life's free throws, you will pay in the end. Right. <laughs> never, let, <laughs> never let anyone lower your goals. Right. I love that. Um, you just won an Emmy for yeah. a show based off your award-winning book, The Crossover. Is that kind of why you got into poetry, so you could get an Emmy? <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> no, but this, this, the, cro the crossover's made right. a enormous journey. Sure. Tell me about that. Sure. I mean, it was a book that was rejected 22 times by right. publishers because um, publishers didn't think boys would read poetry or girls would read a book about basketball. Right. And I always had the vision. I mean, I knew from a very early age, because my mother had introduced me to, to Dr. Seuss. You know, fox, socks, knocks, box, fox in socks, socks in box. <laughs> like, I've loved poetry for so yeah, long, so yeah. I know the impact that it had on my life. And so um, I knew that it would have an impact on young people's lives. I listened somewhere, you said, you might have been joking that you wrote the crossover at a Panera Bread. Right. Is that true? Is that? It is very true. I wrote it. Because I see people with their laptops open, and I go, there's no way that person's writing anything worthwhile right now. <laughs> Dude, but it's, I... it's inspiring if that's true. Many people who write at coffee shops and Panera Breads are going to see this and go, holy shit. Yeah. I have, a, I have an opportunity here. I sat <laughs> in a chair next to a fireplace at right. Panera Bread <laughs> in Herndon, Virginia. And yeah. I wrote every day for five hours a day. And when I won the Newberry Medal yeah. for the crossover, yeah. the manager, whose name was Skip, may he rest in peace, he put a sign up that said, Kwame Alexander wrote the crossover I here. I love that. Yeah. 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 Hey, could be worse. Could be like, don't serve Michael Costa at this bar or something <laughs> like that. Uh, this, is, this is The Honey. This is an anthology of contemporary black poets. Yeah. Uh, I am very white. Mm -hmm. Are you? Can I, can I tackle this? Can everybody tackle this? Here's the thing. Yeah. Poetry is a way to open a, a door to possibility. Yeah. Regardless of who's writing, whether it's Mary Oliver or Nikki Giovanni, whether it's Pablo Neruda or Kwame Alexander, poetry is a way to allow us to connect with each other, to feel yeah. more empathetic, and ultimately to become better human beings. So yeah, this book is for you, yeah. this is for me, this yeah. is for us. Tell me about the title, This is the Honey. We often think about, you know, Black History Month in terms of the woe right. and not the wonder. Right. We think about the tragedy and not the triumph. Right. That's all valuable, but I wanted to create a book that reminded us of all the beautiful things, yeah. of the regular normal things, and remind not only black people, but Americans in general, that black people live, love, hope, right. dream, dance, smile, eat, just like everybody else. So that is, this is the honey. Are you, yeah. <laughs> So many stories, 
so many stories about black suffering. Are you seeing a change in media covering different types of stories in the black community? Well, I don't spend a whole lot of time yeah. looking at what the media is doing, yeah. except watching you. I mean, duh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on, that's right. Um, I spend a lot more time trying to change the narrative, trying yeah. to make sure I'm doing it. Yeah. So... That's great. Yeah. Um, this book is organized in a particular way. Share right. with us how this book is organized. When you wake up in the morning and the sun is out, it's a new day of promise. Yeah. And so the first part of this book is, is the language of joy, of hope. After you've awakened, you see the people you love and the people you care about. Yep. And so the second section is love and caring. And then you go out into the world and you're sort of faced with the challenges of what's happening. And so the third section in the book is dealing with that, th those challenges, those obstacles. And of course, by the time we get to the end of the book, we are at the end of our day. Yep. And we come home and we're grateful and we, we're around family. And we, and, and we offer praise. And so the last piece of the book is dealing with that kind of praise. That's a wonderful synopsis of a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Grateful and praise at the end of the day. I'm not always getting praise and graciousness at the end of my day, but right. maybe that's something I can strive for. Well, you're, 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 you're grateful for your family. Sure. You're grateful yeah. for your, your, your mother. You're grateful for your wife, for your kids. That's true. And so at the end of the you day... that? <laughs> And so, and so, no matter what is happening in our world, no yeah. matter what chaos is going on, yeah. the poetry is sort of a way for us to be uplifted, yeah. to be reminded of the things that matter, family, love, community, hope, possibility. Also sex. I mean, your poems, there's some sex in there. <laughs> I mean... That's where we, that's where we are is, now? It, it, is that the hope part? <laughs> It's not, you don't have to answer that if you don't want to. <laughs> so, last year you, re you released your memoir, yes. Why Fathers Cry at Night, and it's dedicated to your two daughters. Yep. What did you, two part question, what did you want them to get from this? And I'm a father of two daughters. What should I get from this? Here's the deal I mean, as men, we don't often talk about matters of our heart. We don't talk about it with each other. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about it with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I came to a point in my life where I realized that it wasn't serving me any longer, right. you know? And um, my nephew, his name is Jordan, we were in Target with my, um, my, my daughter was shopping, she's a teenager, and we were in Target, and my nephew and I, who's nine, we were dancing in the aisles. Right. And we had a good time, and, and when we got home, you know, later his mother, my sister, she called and she said, Kwame, Jordan said he wants, he can't wait to grow up to be an uncle like you. Aww. Right? Right. And so... <laughs> thank you. That's, that's the kind of man I want to be who has those type of relationships with the people he loves and who, and who love him. And so I wanted to write about that as an exploration. What can I... I mean, you know, man, there's some beautiful stuff in here, and it's poetry, yep. uh, advice... Then there's a recipe for fruit punch. <laughs> you know? Right. And I'd like every page, I'm like, what's next? Right. Uh, as someone who's parenting two daughters, what, what do I need to do? Whether even right. in the book or just in life, tell me. Listen. <laughs> listen. Okay. Hey, it's no, it's yeah. no secret. It's yeah. no way around it. We got to listen yeah. to our daughters. When I, when I was a kid and got in trouble, my mom would send me to the room because I hated being alone. And she, I would be in my room. I hate that woman. I hate that woman. And she'd come in and, and she'd recite a poem or, or, or right. sing a song to make me laugh. I did the same thing with my 15-year-old. I tried to make her laugh when she was upset. And she said, Dad, you know, it's okay to sit with your anger. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, Damn. mind blown. Yeah. I think we got to listen to our kids, yeah. man. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Um, uh, poets are always asked to read poems sure. and interviews, and I just, you know, I, I, I love that comics don't have to do that. Right. You know, I think it's like, you're here to hang and promote your book. Why are we going to put you to work? But I, I really love 10 Reasons Why Fathers Cry at Night mm -hmm. from this from your memoir. Would you mind reading it for us? Sure, sure. Um, and this really resonated with me very much. So, shout out to my two daughters, Nandi and Samaya. When Nandi was a teenager, she came home and said those words, 
no father ever wants to hear. She said, Dad, I want to go on a date. Oh. <laughs> and I said, maybe when you're 30. Right. <laughs> so you got little ones. Yeah. Enjoy that moment. Yeah. Because when they become 15 and 16, it's another life, man. Well, that's why I read this and put it down and I had to take some deep breaths and then I took a picture of it and texted it to my wife and she's like, don't send me this, it's too sad. And, <laughs> and you know, but it's just, it's capturing this human feeling. So please, if you don't mind, thank you very much. 10 Reasons Why Fathers Cry at Night. <laughs> One, because teenagers don't like park swings or long walks anymore unless you're in the mall. Two, because holding her hands is forbidden and kisses are lethal. Three, because school was fine, her day was fine, and yes, she's fine, so why is she weeping? Four, because you want to help, but you can't read minds. Five, because she's in love, and that's cute, until you find his note asking her to prove it. Six, because she didn't prove it. Seven, because next week she's in love again, and this time it's real, she says her heart is heavy. Eight, because she yearns to take long walks in the park with him. Nine, because you remember the myriad woes and wonders of spring desire. And 10, because with trepidation and thrill, you watch your teenage daughter who suddenly wants to swing all by herself. Oh, crushes me. Uh, this is The Honey and Why Fathers Cry at Night are both available now. Kwame Alexander, thank you so much. I really appreciate it.